Hey everybody, welcome to this month's tips and tricks video. My name is Dave Hideman, the application specialist for the steel segment here at Trimble. And just a quick one for you today. Um, this actually came up recently. I was doing uh, a demonstration of Tecla structures for some folks and they asked me a question that I didn't really have a good answer for them at the time. And while there may be other ways to accomplish this, um, I found a solution to that question and uh, it seems to work well for me, so I thought I would share it with you guys. Now, the question that they had was, if we have an existing structure and we change something in that structure, how do we keep track of those changes? How do we keep track of what parts of the building have been touched? And, um, you know, there may be an extension out there that sort of keep tracks this information, but I, at the time, I, I didn't really have a great answer, and, and I kind of gave them an idea of, well, maybe you could... Uh, after changing the parts, you could, you know, select them and you could go into their user defined attributes and you could maybe keep track of them through a UDA or something like that. And, you know, the conversation moved on, but I was bothered by that response because I thought there's surely there's got to be a better way. And this is actually just an, another kind of a, a great instance of, you know, I've been using Tecla now since 2007. So that's what, 13, 14 years, something like that. And I'm always learning new things. So don't be afraid to, even if you've been using Tecla for a while and you think you know everything, don't be afraid to kind of, you know, kick the tires on some stuff and try to figure out something new. So anyway, what I was able to find is that each piece in Tecla structures does track a history. Um, if you go and you inquire on it, you can see there, there's my creation date, 4-29-2021 for this particular model. And I've copied this model multiple times, so it's actually a lot older than that. But this is kind of the latest iteration of the model for, you know, my purposes. And um, that data is only being tracked because there is an advanced option on it. And I thought it would be important to mention this. Let me go to my advanced options real quick, and I'll search for history. And you can see here that there's this collect model history equals true and clear model history equals false. Obviously, clearing the history would clear that out. Now, if you look through the help documentation, this does appear to be geared towards multi-user modeling, but I'm not in a multi-user model and I find that it's tracking my history just fine. After I change a part, once I save it, there is a new updated history for that object. So in this model, I went ahead and I made some changes. And, you know, just like any project that undergoes revisions, they could be buried somewhere deep in the building. You don't exactly remember where those are at. So let me show you how I was able to find parts that I've changed. If you go down to your selection filter, and you could do this with a view filter as well. I'm just using a selection filter as an example. Um, I'm going to create a new filter using a template attribute. And the template attribute I'm going to use is called history dot touched. There's a history dot created. There's a history modified and the modified. I'm not quite sure what's up with that one. It doesn't seem to do what I need it to do or what I expected it to do. But I find that history touched works very well. And what we can do here is we can say, you know, use the contains or greater than or equal to. So I'm going to do the greater than or equal to. And the date that I'm recording this is uh, 7 2021 and that's when I change these parts. So I'm going to say greater or equal to 07 2021 And if I enable this filter and say apply, actually, let's go ahead and save this as a view filter as well while we're here. And I'll just call this uh, changed uh, today. Um, when we enable that filter and I sweep across the model, we see exactly the parts that I had modified after that date. If I zoom in here and actually grab one of these pieces and pull up its properties, we'll be able to see that there is the initial creation date of the rest of the model when I did a save as of this project. And then here is the updated date from today. Um, through that history attribute, you can also see who did it. So if you wanted to create separate filters for the different users, let me go ahead and pull up the website quick. So if we look now at the Tecla user assistance, you can see there's modified and touched attributes. They're template attributes. Um, but you can also get, if you look through this list, we've got this created, created by, uh, touched, touched by, owner. So all of those things are theoretically uh, filterable, if I can invent a word here, a filterable 
bits of data about these parts. So anyway, I just wanted to share that real quick. You know, this way now you can sort of find and filter. Let's use the view filter here just for fun. So let's go ahead and um, we'll use our view filter here, change today, modify, and then we can just restrict the model to just those affected parts. I thought that was super cool. I thought that was a great solution that I wish I had when I was on the phone with those folks. Um, this is so much easier than trying to track a UDA or something like that. Uh, so anyway, I'll stop there. If anybody has any additional kind of ideas for how you track history uh, in your Tecla model, um, go ahead and leave that below. Hey, I'm always willing to learn new things and we can always share that with some other folks. Um, but as always, uh, thank you for watching. I hope this was uh, useful for some of you and we'll see you next time.